If you've been looking to buy a home this year, probably one of the biggest things you've been thinking about is, you know, how risky is it for me to buy a home in this market? I was looking last year and prices are so different than they are this year. Everything's just gotten so expensive. Does it even make sense anymore? Or is the market about to crash like 2006, 2007? You know, how do I protect myself in this market? I, I really do wanna buy a home, but how do I do it and not put myself in a very vulnerable situation? That is exactly what I'm gonna answer right now. Let's get into it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Connor Green. I'm a realtor here in Tampa Bay. And I've got a lot of buyers who are asking that same question, have that same concern. It's something that I put a lot of time into thinking and researching myself. So I completely understand where you're coming from. And I wanna give you some real actionable advice that's gonna help you right now. I'm gonna give you my top five tips. And the last one is one you're not going to miss because it could be the key to getting a really good deal that no one else knows about. Number one is gonna be a lock in that rate as soon as possible. So by rate, I'm talking about your interest rate. Most likely you're gonna be getting a loan. You're not just gonna be buying the property outright in cash. And so the reason I say to lock in the rate as soon as possible is because rates have gone up significantly. Just in the past month, if you haven't locked in your rate, you know, you've missed out significantly on where they were at versus where they're at now. And the reason rates have gone up so much is because inflation and prices have gone pretty high. And so the government is trying to subdue the market a little bit, calm it down by discouraging buyers from buying. The higher the rates, the less likely people are to buy. Historically speaking though, the rates are still pretty low and the demand, even despite the rates increasing, the demand still stayed pretty strong, which basically means that, okay, yeah, you've increased the rates on me. Does it suck? Yeah. Is my monthly mortgage gonna be more? Yes, it is. But I still wanna buy a home and it's still worth it to me to buy, I'm not gonna rent. And so that means that rates probably are gonna continue to go higher which means you should lock it in as soon as possible. Number two, be in it for the long term. And what I mean by that is to be in any market, whether it's the real estate market, the stock market, uh, crypto, anything for the long run versus the short run, short run maybe being a month, a year, it's going to protect you significantly in terms of your investment and by not buying and selling at the wrong time. By buying and selling at the wrong time, maybe you lose money. That's what, pretty much what speculation is. So if you can be in it for the long run, then you can significantly protect yourself from any market volatility. You know, if the prices go up or they go down or whatever, eventually they're going to be going up. And so as long as you're not buying it here and then maybe it goes down or goes up or whatever, as long as you're not speculating, just stay it for the long run, stay in it for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, then you're gonna protect yourself significantly. And one way to do that is look at the property as a potential rental in the future. Don't look at it as something that in five years you're gonna sell and then buy something else. Look at it as something that in five years if you wanna upgrade, this now becomes your first rental property. And now you're gonna own two properties instead of one. And that rental property, once it's paid off, should be a really good cash flowing asset. Number three, don't go for the 100% move in ready, uh, brand new, beautiful home. Go for the one that needs just a little bit of work. Right now in this market, even though buyers are definitely a lot less picky, they're still picky, you know, and buyers always are gonna want the move and ready home that they don't have to do anything to, and they're gonna pay a lot more for it. So the premiums that I'm seeing on those homes is quite high. So if you wanna protect yourself, don't buy the homes that have a huge premium on it, buy the ones that don't have as much of a premium on it. Maybe instead of, you know, $30,000 above appraisal, you know, the ones that need a little bit of work are only $1,000 above appraisal, maybe five. And so inherently that's gonna protect yourself and your investment by having more of an equity boost right up front because you're buying something that's just less competitive, you know, and do a little bit of the work yourself. You know, DIY projects and stuff are fun like that. So try to take on some work, don't take on more work than you need, but that will help you protect yourself too. Number four, don't waive the appraisal contingency and definitely do not, do not waive the inspection. Uh, what I mean by those two is that if you agree to purchase a home, let's say at $500,000, and you say, I'm gonna waive the appraisal contingency, if that home actually appraises out at 425, you now have a $75,000 check that you just agreed to give to the seller at closing, which is gonna be on top of all your closing costs and money down. So you might already be putting 5% down, you already have your closing costs and stuff, and now you've got $75,000 that you have to give them to. So don't do that, just do an appraisal you know, gap where basically you say, okay, uh, if it doesn't appraise out at the 500,000, 
I will pay up to $15,000 for appraisal. You know, that way, if it appraises out at 425, you agree to pay 440. And that kind of limits the amount in which you might be viable for in terms of paying, and it makes it a lot more manageable. Inspection wise, you don't want to waive that inspection contingency because that could open up the deal to become honestly just a real disaster. You never know if there's going to be structural issues, foundational issues, you know, any of those huge big ticket items where it's just going to change the deal financially, where all of a sudden it might not make sense anymore. Or maybe even from a safety standpoint, you and your family don't even want to live there. Maybe there's just a, a massive amount of mold in the attic or a massive amount of rats or whatever it is. I mean, rats really not that big of a deal. I hate rats is why I say it, but you know, something like that. So don't waive the inspection, you know, just do a short one. Don't do a 20 day inspection, you know, get your inspector booked to start. That way you can still have a short inspection period, but not open yourself up to a lot of liability. And then number five, which I told you is gonna be one that could potentially get you a very good deal that no one else knows about is work with listing heavy agents. And what I mean by that is work with agents who list a lot of properties in the area that you want to buy a home in. That way, if you're looking for a three bed, two bath home in, you know, Main Street, USA, if you have a listing agent who, let's say, lists on average of one property a month in Main Street, USA, then you're going to have access to that property maybe before it even hits the market. By not having to wait for that property to come to market, you also don't have to compete with other people which can ultimately get you a much better deal. So those are my top five tips for protecting yourself in today's market if you're buying a home. If you have one that I didn't think about or list, go ahead and list it in the comments below. I'm sure other people would appreciate it. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you like real estate, if you wanna learn more about it, whether it's just general market updates or specific real estate topics, whether it comes to buying, selling, or investing, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I make more videos just like this, super easy to understand and nice and straightforward. But that's it for me today, guys. So until next time, this is Connor Green. Have a blessed day.